Have you seen the falling iguanas? Is that a thing? Is that like an actual thing? Apparently when the weather gets super cold in Florida, iguanas will fall from the trees because they like freeze and they get like, and then there's like- a I heard warning. about that. I heard about it, but I didn't see any of them. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome in to our AT&T 5G virtual studio. We're back, it we're is back, season. we're back. <laughs> it is season four. I am Jillian Sakovitz. That is Susanna Collins. And this is the call up. And you want to hear a beautiful sound? It's like it's like popping a bottle, but our way. Oh, oh yeah. Jill, That's season good. four. They have let season us do four. this. For four seasons. Look at this. We have to give some mad love to the New York Red that. Bulls. It's a beautiful sound. Isn't the it? New York Red Bulls are helping us kick off the season right because they sent us uh, these incredible wine glasses and red wine to go with it. So I just put that together. Heck yeah. Red it, wine. Red, red bulls. bulls. Cheers, my friend. Clink. <laughs> oh. Just tastes different, doesn't it? It does. You Going know, something really about easy. maybe because I'm working, maybe because it was free, maybe because it was a gift. I don't know. But I, heck yeah. Thank you, New York Red Bulls. They're I setting know. up our interview with the Chicago Fire's newest edition, Casper Shabelko, real, real well. You know what? This just shows the unity that is MLS. Nice little cocktail by the New York Red Bulls and a guest today from the Chicago Fire. This guy warmed up real well, and he he wants to come back. He broke some news he did. on the show. Did you may know him uh, from scoring some absolute gorgeous goals for the Philadelphia Union over three and a half seasons, 35 goals in 83 games. The Polish striker from Germany, Kasper Shabelko, we had a heck of an interview uh, with him, and it, a great way, Susanna Collins, to kick off 2022, wasn't it? So, so great. He had such good, positive energy. You can tell that he is super excited to be with the Chicago Fire uh, because this is a team, you know, it's been, it's it's not been the best for the Chicago Fire the last few seasons. Wah, wah. But I'm feeling, but listen, you know, I'm a Chicago gal. I am feeling so incredibly good about the direction that they're going in. I love their new coach, Ezra Hendrickson. I love the signing of Casper Shabilko. I love their new crest, this rebrand. So I just feel like it's like real good energy, real good energy around the Chicago Fire. And he was a fantastic first interview for our uh, fourth Fourth season. Of I'm getting call. emotional. Maybe it's because I haven't season. had wine in a long time. <laughs> but if if you're listening to this episode and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. I didn't know Casper Shabelko was playing with Chicago Fire. Don't worry. Neither really did we. The guy's only been there a week. He hasn't even been to Chicago nope. uh, yet. So all the moving and shaking that is MLS <sighs> because Susanna Collins, let's oh. be real. The call up may have been on a... Uh, Hiatus. Six, seven week hiatus, but there's no hiatus in major league soccer, no. is there? No, I, th this off season, I, I say off season, um, with a little like asterisk by it because there really big, was big no asterisk. off season. Okay. I mean, we were only like three weeks out Damn from it. the regular season starting, but it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy because we, can we talk about the moves that were made and some of the, like in the transfer market, like these young guys, Ricardo Pepe, we knew, we knew was probably going to go overseas. He's and let's be honest. DK. Well, where was Kevin like the Paredes. first place that he really did an interview was the call up i know exactly Clinked. We, we knew. these guys can't even drink they Cheers. can't even drink well, Bassett, now they can. another cole bassett another call up alum he gone but He's they can drink him. now because they're 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 abroad and they, they can have a cocktail to celebrate no, it's their just, transfers it's, it's so exciting it's so exciting because i think like you know, from the time I've been with the league since 2016, and I've never seen an offseason like this where so many promising young players are getting picked up by teams overseas in Europe, big clubs too. And it's, it's, it really, it's just a testament to the growth of the league. Um, the, the amount of resources that we've put into to youth development here, it's, it's very gratifying. And I'm so proud. I feel like I like, you know, proud, mama. proud mama. Yeah. Completely. Proud mama's dr drinking our wine, talking about our, our, our youth. Wine. Heck yeah. I'll, I'll share a real cute um, story on Monday night. I was hosting a national girls and women in sports day um, panel with inter Atlanta. Shout out to my girls at inter Atlanta um, around some in incredible women. And we opened it up for questions at the end. And first question you get is 
Why did Atlanta United get rid of George Bello no. and Barco? Uh, Barco obviously loaned out to River Plate and George Bello. Um, moving on to Casper Schabelko's hometown of Bielefeld in yeah. Germany. So kind of an incredible little hook there. And and, and I got to admit, I got emotional for a minute thinking about little George Bello. I know. From Georgia, you know, coming up through the academy. And then next thing you know, mainstay on the first team, getting call-ups to the U.S. men's national team. And I'm so excited to see him go on. Uh, to the Bundesliga it's it's, it's incredible I know it's the fans are bummed but like it's good for the league I overall. need I this is I'm going to take this moment to tell the fans because I know it is hard it's hard when you fall in love with these players and you love them on your team but this is this is that moment where you you let them spread their wings this is a Susanna. good thing ultimately this is a really good thing and I as sad as it can be to see your guys go elsewhere on the whole, this is such a positive for for soccer in North America. And for, for, soccer US, for US soccer. Exactly. For US this soccer. As wonderful. they say, if you love something, let it let go. It go. <laughs> and on that note, let's get <laughs> shall we get into our first interview of the season? We shall. Let's do it. Well, time now for AT&T 5G call to the field. We are so happy to bring in a guy who has been in MLS since 2018. He spent three and a half seasons with the Philadelphia Union, leading them in goals scored the last three seasons. But he is the newest member of the Chicago Fire, Casper Shabilko. It is so great Hi, to guys. have you on. <laughs> Hi, How guys, was I'm her pronunciation? <laughs> Pronunciation was good. It was good for the first time. Shibilko, Shibilko, Shibilko. Shibilko we saw yeah. we saw a video that the fire did of the guys on the team trying to <laughs> say your name. How did they do? They did great. Like okay. some of them, like you know, kind of like close, like from Europe to close to Poland, you know, like Slovakia or something. Like they did very good. But all the others, uh, don't want to say the Americans, but it. Um, they just silent the P and there's a P in front. So it's not Shibilko, it's Pshibilko. 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 Pshibilko, yeah. I'm nice. going to practice that later. Um, okay. Casper, <laughs> tell me, uh, you're heading, obviously, uh, to the Chicago Fire, but it's preseason. So you haven't even gotten to step foot in Chicago yet. But how excited are you for the fact that it's kind of like the Polish capital of the United States, is it not? Oh, it is. It is. Uh, Population-wise, I think it's the second biggest one. Uh, mm -hmm. The biggest one is in Poland and w Warsaw. Um, okay. And then it's, then it's Chicago. So it's like, uh, it's very cool. I'm very excited for it. Um, it's, it's a coincidence that Chicago just came with an offer. Um, it's not just about the Polish people there. It's about everyone. I'm so excited to meet everyone in Chicago. Yeah, but that's the funny story. I haven't been there yet. I'm here in Orlando, and uh, I will be back when we have, uh, because like our preseason split like in two uh, preseasons. I'm just gonna head back to Philly to see my family, my my wife and my kid, and then I'm gonna go straight to Texas. Um, so uh, I haven't been there yet. Uh, my wife is there <laughs> right now today for the house inspection. We uh, got the house. We're so excited for it. Yeah, but she was there first. <laughs> so well, you found Casper. a place to live. We found a place. Yeah. That what neighborhood? What thing. neighborhood are you are you going to live in? I'm from Chicago, oh. so I know it well. Oh. Orland Park. Oh, perfect, perfect. It's yeah, you also, you're also from you're also from there. <laughs> I am. I grew up. I grew up in a suburb called Downers Grove, which is about 25 miles Downers west Grove. of the oh, city. Oh yeah, I heard about it too. I was looking for that. Um, area. and it's it's lovely. Orland Park is great. It's a great place, especially with your with your little boy. Great place for families. I think you've done you've done very well. That's good. Good to hear. I'm happy <laughs> to hear that. So you've spent the last, you know, three and a half seasons with with the Philadelphia Union. What was your reaction when you found out that Chicago made this offer? They wanted you. Um, I mean, because you you did so well with the Union, but now it's a it's a new team, and the Chicago Fire are kind of under this like whole new rebrand, new coach, new players, new everything. How did you feel about this move? My first reaction was more about like being happy and honored that a team just really came by and they were like, hey, we want you here. And they offered me such a great contract. You know, uh, no, like the most people just don't know that I I was playing in, in Philly and uh, I signed for four years, but it was like optional. So every season I had to perform. So it was kind of like pressure, especially mm. like in a kind of like sport uh, injury can always happen. 
Um, so I just felt honored and uh, very happy that, uh, you know, Chicago came and, um, yeah, they've been fighting from the, since I think day one. So, um, I'm really excited and being happy like, being here right now. Um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it, uh, but unfortunately I haven't been in Chicago yet. So, uh, the team is great. Just waiting for the others, uh, because like, we're just missing some players, uh, like some of them, like national teams, I think uh, Chihu is still in Germany, but he will come, I think tomorrow to the team so i'm really excited I'm, I'm really happy being here i'll tell you one thing you are not missing much in terms of mm. the weather because yeah, chicago yeah. in january and february as i'm sure you've been told is not the best not the best so so by the Everyone. time you get there maybe it will be you know springtime in chicago is lovely so maybe you'll get there like right at the sweet spot and it's everybody wonderful. told it's me delightful. that everybody told me that but <laughs> right now in chicago it's warmer than in philly so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who should I trust about the weather? <laughs> well, we can't wait to see you in Chicago when, in fact, you do get there. But let's talk about the other places um, you've lived, Casper. Polish name, obviously, Polish family. But your biography says you were born in Bielefeld, Germany. Um, did you grow good. up? You like that? Bielefeld. Bielefeld? Yeah, I like that. That was a good pronunciation. Very good. It's like I know a German or something. <laughs> um <laughs> Polish family, though. So did you grow up in Germany? Like, what do you I know you played a lot with the Polish um, youth national team. So, like, tell us about you. Then my entire family is Polish. The only ones, the really exceptions is just like my two siblings. So my twin brother, my one year older brother and just myself. We just been born in Germany and raised there. Um, we just the only ones. But other than that, we speak Polish at home. Uh, my grandparents just speak Polish. They always visit me. It's like, you know, we're like neighbors, Poland and Germany. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that far. Um, but yeah, um, I was born in Germany. Uh, uh, I, I always consider like, I think German my first language because, you know, the vocabulary, you know, like I, I know most of them because I've been there at school. But I can also speak Polish. Uh, uh, I'm happy also to improve my English here too. And now being now in Chicago, so I can improve both <laughs> again. Because now when you, when you don't speak, you just forget uh, words. And now and I can, now I can improve both. And my son's gonna uh, be, uh, be in Chicago too, so he can just also be like in the Polish, you know, daycare or like a school preschool. So I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, I was born in Germany. Um, <clears throat> even my wife, even my wife, uh, I met her in Philly. Uh, she came to Philly when she was eight years old. Uh, so, um, yeah, with the only exceptions, my brothers and, and, and myself. <laughs> so you speak three languages, English, Polish and German. Anything else? I was very good in languages. I was so always interested in languages. I was very good at French. I just forgot everything because after, I think, three or four years of uh, French in school, I switched to Spanish because I liked Spanish a bit more. Um, yeah, in my first year, in my first like Spanish year, I was like mixing both. So my teacher always told me, Casper, hey, it's Spanish class. It's not French class anymore. So <laughs> forget all the French words. Um, what's the yeah, trick? It's the, like... it's the romance language. Casper, they're, what's they're the similar. trick? I'm trying so hard I... just to learn a second language and it's so hard. What is the trick for somebody like you? I don't know. Maybe uh, I was blessed, you know, born in Germany, uh, talking Polish and then having like English yeah. at school from the beginning. So I kind of grew up with three languages from the beginning, being, you know, like a young kid. But other than that, I think it's really tough. It's really tough. It's impressive. I still mix up the words. I forget words and everything. But, you know, half of the team is Spanish, too. So I want to improve my Spanish. So I, at the end of the, the year, I hope I, I'm going to speak four languages. <laughs> God, I, that, I know that really is. It's so, so impressive, impressive. And your English is incredible, Casper. So Thank my you. goodness. Thank you. No, no work <laughs> needed there. Um, so you mentioned you have a twin brother that also plays yeah. soccer, but then you have a, another brother who is a, a high jumper. This is like, I mean, you've got some crazy athletic genes <laughs> coursing through the Shabilko family, apparently. What, I mean, tell me about kind of like what home life was and how, how you got into soccer and sport in general. It was, home life was always a competition. You always, I always understood, uh, wanted to beat my brothers. Uh, so we had all the time the competition. So that's kind of like pushed us all the time. And that's probably like we like stayed, you know, at sport. We all grew up together. That was amazing. We went from first to 10 class, like all the time we've been in the same class. It was amazing. And yeah, we all started with soccer. I don't know how that really happened. I think my dad was always a good soccer player. My mom was uh, in track and field. Uh, mm. She did, I think, sprint and uh, long jump. Um, 
And we kind of kind of like stuck into that way. We, we tried everything. We really tried everything. We went from karate, judo, uh, to track and field, soccer, and uh, name it. Name every sport. We tried everything. Uh, but I always loved soccer. My twin brother, too, so we kind of got stuck in, in soccer. And my older brother, very successful. Um, I think four years ago, European champion. I'm very proud of that. My twin brother is also selling it very well because I know this business, you need sometimes a lot of luck. It's not all about, you know, like quality and talent. Sometimes you need luck in this business, but he's doing great too. So um, I'm very proud of both of them. Oh, what a good wow. brother you are. So, okay. Growing up, obviously, um, playing uh, in many a German youth club, like I said, um, for the youth Polish national teams. But how did the move to go out of your bubble in Germany to Philadelphia, how did that move come about in 2018 when you came to Major League Soccer and the Philadelphia Union? It was more about my injury. Uh, I don't like to speak about it anymore because every time, like every, it's the same question. How's your foot? How's your foot still working? I'm like, hey guys, for the past two years. I've well, been I apologize that we have not yet asked no, you no, about it's your all, foot. No, it's okay. <laughs> so no, rude. It's so good. rude of no. us. Oh good! No, 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 no! It's it, totally not. It's a, it's a fair question, um, and th that was the main reason. So I have to mention it was the main reason because I had an injury. When you have an injury, people forget about you. You want to come back stronger, obviously. But then people say like, "Hey, um, after this long time, you haven't played games. You, uh, you know, like it was a pretty tough time also for me too, like mental wise." Um, so. I kind of like wanted to do something else, wanted to go out, you know, a little bit out of Germany, you know, to show everybody, um, hey, I'm still here, I'm still functioning. And then, yeah, and then my agent had a good contact to the sports director in Philly, and it kind of went quick. It went quick. Uh, I went there. Um, I'll, I'm being honest. When when I came to America, um, everyone told me it's a very weak, you know, league. I was like, huh. Just give it a try. So I went there. I've seen the team. I've seen, you know, my former teammates. I've seen a couple of games and this league is growing. This league is strong. Um, so everyone who is like, who has like prejudices about this uh, league, give it a try. Take a look because it's a really good league. Um, and yeah, it kind of went quick. Uh, I was, you know, I was intrigued by, by the team. I was intrigued by all the skyscrapers in Philly. So I decided to be <laughs> Wait there. Wait till you get to Chicago. Wait till you I know, get to I've Chicago. Been, I haven't been there. I haven't been there yet. After I signed line in Chicago now, but uh, you know, like and then I had my away games. I know, galore. I know Fabian Herbers, um, and he showed me a little bit already. Like yes, you know, Chicago. yes, yes. Uh, well, I I think it's fair to say that the move to MLS has worked out for you, Casper, because uh, you have just been sensational since coming over thirty five goals you. in eighty three games with the Philadelphia Union. I think. Uh, I, I'm going to call you the the Robert Lewandowski of Major League Soccer. I think that's fair to say, right? Like, come on, come that, on. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Right? I think he accomplished it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. He's but, an excellent guy. Uh, but it's, it's an honor. It's an honor when you say like, like Robert Lewandowski. He's a fantastic <laughs> striker. You score. I mean, you've you've scored some beautiful, beautiful goals and in abundance. And you had such a special season, 2020. You guys win the Supporters Shield with the Philadelphia Union. Can you just kind of uh, explain and describe what what that felt like and how much that meant to you from a just a personal standpoint? Amazing. Uh, it was totally amazing especially you know like it was a tough time you know it was like a tough schedule the pandemic hit and i know it was tough tough for everyone not just for us soccer players i think uh, really like yeah, it was a, just you know like not a good time for everybody and uh, we handled it right we did good as a team and in the end of the day we got the support shield and uh, that's one accomplishment um that i will never forget uh, it will always be my memory so uh, it's a huge accomplishment i'm really happy about it so we know you haven't been to Chicago um, yet as being the home team, but obviously you've been there uh, for away games. And one thing I always love to talk to foreign players about is they get to see so much of the of North America, um, you know, while yeah. they're playing in Major League Soccer. You know, one day you could be in Orlando, the next day you could be all the way in Vancouver. And, you know, that's really unparalleled in most leagues across the world. So we got to ask you. What's been your favorite away city? Chicago doesn't count um, that you've enjoyed <laughs> playing in. And what's the most intimidating stadium you've stepped foot in in, in MLS? 
It's tough to say, but because it's really a blessing, like you said, it's really a blessing being a soccer player, especially in America. You travel so much, you see so many different places, so different cultures and everything. Even with Canada and everything, it's really, it's really nice. And and that's what I love about soccer. It connects people, and especially you know, like I am, you know, the one who's blessed who can travel and see all these things. Um, but it's really tough to say because um, I have to admit that. At the Philly Stadium, I was so impressed because with the location, you have this river, you mm -hmm. have this bridge. Beautiful. And, you know, Underrated. It's beautiful. And then I came to Chicago. Chicago, obviously, also a huge stadium. Um, I played also like in big stadiums where, you know, like, like soccer is connected to American football. It's kind of cool. But in, I think um, the biggest, you know, crowd that I had here in, in the MLS was uh, for today's day, I think was Atlanta or uh, LAFC. And that was, uh, that was a nice experience, too. Yeah, it's incredible. I, I mean, like and that. it's such it's a testament. It's a testament to the growth of the sport, the league yeah. here. So I feel like it's a really special time uh, to be sort of in the soccer sphere in North America. But let's talk oh. about your new team. Let's talk about the Chicago Fire, because as we kind of said at the top of the show, this is a this is a, a team that's sort of it has a brand new identity. We've got a new coach. We've got new players coming in, new faces. Based on your experiences so far, I know you're in preseason with them right now in Orlando. But what are what's going to be the identity of this Chicago Fire team? I think I can really say like we are family here. It's really I came here and I was welcomed so nice, so many talents, so many good players with a lot of quality. But I kind of feel the connection that we like really growing uh, already together. And uh, when we have first match against uh, Minnesota you kind of like felt that we want to win as a team and th that's a nice feeling um, uh, you see a lot of talent obviously um, I'm a bit older I want to give them a bit more of my experience uh, but other than that we have also a lot of quality uh, besides the young kids um, so um, I'm really not worried about the season um, I'm really looking forward to it I'm really excited because I think uh, we're gonna have like a great year this year to Susanna's point, it kind of feels like for the Chicago Fire that it's just about time finally for all these pieces uh, to fall into place. And it, uh, we look forward to watching them this year. We also look forward to your new head coach in Ezra Hendrickson. Um, it's been a guy. He is a guy who's been around the league for quite some time um, now, years as a player, won three MLS Cups as an assistant to epic coaches like Ziggy Schmidt, Caleb Porter, uh, hard to believe it's his first head coaching job in Major League Soccer. He's promised that the Fire are going to be successful this season. Casper, what have your first impressions of him been? It's really hard to believe it's his first season uh, as a head coach because the things he's already like doing here, everything what he's saying, the philosophy, how he wants to play, how everything what he explains, it's really impressive. So I can uh, really learn so much from him. And the team, uh, it obviously, uh, will learn so much from him. Everything what he's doing, um, it's on point. Everything what he's saying, uh, it's really positive. And he wants to help every single player on the field to push forward uh, and to be the best you know, version on the field. Um, so we have a good coach. Um, I didn't have so much time yet like to talk to him, but all the talks that I had, like pretty much like two or three, uh, were, they've been amazing. So I can, even I, even me, like in my age, I can learn so much from him and I'm really excited. When did you get to Orlando, Casper? That was pretty much a week ago, like eight okay, nine so days ago. Okay, been around your team for like, like a week. Who was the first? I still, I still don't know the names. We just won, won uh, <laughs> I think two days or three days ago. We had like a warm up, and the, the most important part of this was, uh, you know, knowing the names. <laughs> and we had like imagine imaginary like ball. We had to throw to our teammates and just call the names. I, I got the ball. I'm like you. I'm like you. <laughs> yeah, really like talking. I did about. that in kindergarten. I really apologize. I still yeah. I still ap apologize for that. Um, but I think uh, it's it's just fair, you know. Like uh, it's it's my. Well, like, I just wanted seven, to eight eight days, so. <laughs> ask you um, who was the first guy to kind of reach out and and welcome you to the Chicago Fire. Fabian Herbers was the first guy. He was my former teammate in Philly. We always had uh, a good connection. Uh, still, like uh, we've been always in touch. And uh, when everything was like kind of like going uh, that I'm gonna sign here, uh, I, I reached out to him, and uh, we both been happy to see each other again. That's all. I, he's got a soccer podcast as well with Julian Gressel, the Z, yeah, yeah. Z 
Z Sucker podcast. So I just, you yeah. know, you came on here first. Just don't just remember that because I'm sure you'll, you'll probably be a guest for them at some point. But just remember <laughs> that's a, that's a very we got you. We will see. We will see. I didn't get um, the officially invitation yet. <laughs> they're missing exactly. out. See, we got we got the jump on it. Um, well, you mentioned your your son. You became a first time dad last year yeah. so how how has fatherhood changed your life because we we love to talk to, to our to our players who are who are dads and to get kind of a sense of what that's like and how you balance being a dad and being a professional soccer player but what are your what are what's being a dad like for you what's casper spilko like as a father my life changed completely it's a totally <laughs> different lifestyle totally different life uh, you really don't have time to rest uh, you need to work with your little guy but it's a blessing um, as long as he's healthy he's such an amazing kid i love him so much and uh, i know it's uh, like a cliche to say that but it's a beautiful thing but on the other hand it's like it's really tough to have a kid uh, i really don't blame people who don't like who don't have kids and they're like i don't want to have kids i don't blame them because it's a really <laughs> tough work and and i have to admit it uh, it's, uh, i'm not ashamed to even admit it uh but on the other hand it's also beautiful everything what he gives back you know the smarts the fun and everything it's it's so amazing uh i just kind of like feel sometimes guilty to leave him alone with my wife um but i have to also say um a huge thanks and uh, a big compliment to my wife. She did everything on her own there. She, obviously, she got some help from uh, like her mom, like my mother-in-law, thanks to that too. Um, but she's doing everything on her own because like most of the time I'm away games. I'm here in the preseason now for pretty much a entire month. And yeah. everything what she did with him, um, I'm, I'm really happy about it. So I just want to reach out now to her and I can say like, thank you, love, uh, for the amazing work. Um, she's doing so great with him. Major credit to you. You're a smart man shouting out your wife and your yes. mother-in-law on yes. the It comes from very, the bottom of my heart. Very smart. Heart. Oh, I it don't is, doubt I don't sincere. doubt your heart one bit, but you're using your heart and your brain, Casper. What's your son's name so we can shout him out? Leo. His name is Leo. Leo. Oh, and it's not because Leo. it's not because not of Leo Messi. Messi. <laughs> it's not because of Leo Messi. It's not because of I wanted to call him Leonardo, but then my wife said Leonardo Pshibirko, that's way too long. Imagine he goes to school and he has to write first his first name, Leonardo. Sounds that's like an artist. Wrote. And then Pshibirko. I That's what I said. It's a very dignified That's what name. I said. Leonardo Pshibirko. And then they're like, call the people Leonardo and call him in real life Leo. And she's like, no, Casper. it's going to be Leo. So he you was didn't born. name him Leonel, you named him Leo. He was born in the States, correct? Correct. So... So, do we do we have a future U.S. men's national team player? Could this? We will, I mean, we will see. I mean, I'm I have another saying. big announcement. To, I have about another big announcement. My wife is already pregnant, and there's a second <gasps> guy coming to this family. So yeah! maybe we're gonna Breaking get two of them. <laughs> what's the due? Down. What's the due date? The due date what's, is uh, October the month? 15th. Oh, October. 15th. October. I'm in October, October November. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think okay. 15th. I know 15, but I don't know oh, October is... or November. Okay. Well, you're close enough, Casper. You've got close time. enough. Yeah. You you've got a few months to figure <laughs> it out. That time, is yeah. amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. I'm really excited we, for it too. Thank you for breaking the news on this show. We appreciate you. I know. You. This is this is, hey, this I, is a I, huge I feel gift honored to be the first guest in the, <laughs> this year, like at your podcast. So I have to break right. something. Well, <laughs> just consult us about the name. You know, if you guys are going back and forth between like Leo, Leonardo, like just just let us know. We're, we're happy, we're happy to, to help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're our services are. Oh, are we always like here for you. Uh, Thank, yeah, thanks yeah. for that. But it, it, everyone <laughs> told me if it's Leo, if it's Leo, then the other one has to be Cristiano. You know. <laughs> I mean, Cristiano Shabilko, Shabilko, Cristiano Shabilko. What about Robert? Right? Like, don't Robert, we want to pay homage nice to the to the uh, the Polish? I know exactly. Could be Robert, um, but I think we have two names, and we just think we're gonna stay with these two names, but we don't know okay. yet. It's, it's also we're ben, assuming it's a boy. Ben. Yeah, Austin. I know. Oh, Ben, like because for Philadelphia. Maybe. Sons of Ben. Oh, there ben, we go. But. It, but our first is like Finn. So we don't know. Okay. <sighs> it's another good name. It's another great name. You, you're on thank it. You, I, we trust you guys. <laughs> we could go well, on for this for hours. I know, Casper, exactly. thank you Wait, so much. Wait, what's your wife's name? What's your wife's name real quick before we Kinga. let you go? Kinga. 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 <laughs> now what that's a, a good name. Incredible. That's it. That is. That is. We got even, awesome. even like matching tattoos after like 
two weeks of dating. I have a K, she has a K. <laughs> After two weeks of dating, you guys got matching yeah, every, tattoos? I mean, you just knew. You just knew. You knew. If you know, you when know. you know, you right? know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Was there, well, this who, is, I mean, who was more scared, though? I just, I have to know more about this. Like, who was a little bit I mean, more like, oh, I don't know. Who was more like, we're doing it? We both been like ready for it. We both like we weren't scared like to do that. Uh, but I think you know, for just ha having the first tattoo was her first tattoo, so there was a bigger commitment to her. Oh, that she is. She got the K, so I think she was kind of like not afraid, but you know, like uh, worried it's gonna be uh, <sighs> like it's gonna hurt. Uh, I have already some tattoos, so uh, I was yeah. You were ready. Said, yeah, let's you do know it. what to expect. <laughs> well. I love it. I, it's I give you credit for not doing the Kardashian thing. You're not keeping the K's going throughout the whole family. You know, you're letting your kids no. form your own, your own identity. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They can develop their own personality. Um, I don't think they need all the K's too. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, well, Casper, so many good things happening for you. Congratulations on the new team, Thank you. on the baby on the way. Um, we are, we're so thrilled that you are our first guest of 2022. Thank you so much for coming on. What you gonna do in 2022? What you gonna do in 2022? Hey, um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that was, Jill came up with that. But in, in lieu of here for this, we decided that it would be fun. I think we did this last season, Jill, where we, yeah, we did. went through each we team and something yeah. that we're excited about or something that we wish for each team heading into mm -hmm. the season. Yeah. So we're gonna do the same thing. So this we're is like, our here for this. Yeah. Right. Here for this is what are these teams going to do? And I'm I'm more of a writer than a singer. So what are you going to do in 2022? There you go. Um, and don't worry. I know we did our preseason um, MLS best dressed coach rankings. That's coming. Susanna Collins at the end. Uh, yeah. At the beginning of last year. And we have to revisit that. Oh, hundred percent. I don't know We've how this shuffling. works. We've got shuffling. Well, but yeah. Seuss, I don't know how it works. If like, if did I win last year with my pick and Jim Curtin? Because well, yeah, because Lucci you're... got fired. <laughs> yeah, so like Lucci can't really win. Just... We'll figure it out. We got to figure out the rules of, of preseason <laughs> rankings. But I'm feeling pretty good about yeah. about Jim Curtin. That's all I'm gonna say. But all I right, know. so people are waiting for that list. So don't worry, it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It will be here before opening day. Okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna Jill is gonna take the East, and I'm gonna take the West. So. Jill, we're going to kick it off with the East. Are you ready for this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, Eastern Conference, what are you going to do in 2022? What are you going to do in 2022? <gasps> New England Revolution. Oh, I have to go in this order I have up here on my screen. In no particular order, um, okay. Toronto FC. I am most looking forward to Bradley Squared with Bob Bradley, now the head coach of Toronto FC, and his son, Michael Bradley, still playing there. I know Bradley Squared sounds boring, but I think you've got a very motivated Michael Bradley and you've got a very motivated Bob Bradley. And I think that sounds like a very I like scary it. thing. I'm excited um, for Toronto. P.S. Then Insigne comes in in the summer and then. Definitely a team to watch. There you go. Club de foot. Good old club, club de, de foot. foot. <laughs> uh, jokes on you if you overlook them, because last year I put them at the bottom of my preseason rankings. And then it felt like every other darn week they were above Atlanta United. So, you know what? Jokes on you. Do not overlook um, the team that reps the snowflake. That's all I got to say yep, about yep, yep. them. Um, as for New England, Bruce Arena, he says that Matt Turner is probably going to Arsenal this summer. So I'm just really sad to see Matt Turner leave. Jill, it's, these are supposed to be positive. I know these are exciting, but I'm really bummed about Matt Turner. I just really no, want to No, be happy for him. Like we said, let them, if you love them, let them go. If you love them, let them go. And we know we know Bruce is gonna like have an ace up his sleeve one, one, one way or another, but. Yeah, I ain't worried about the reps. You ain't They're worried fine. about the revs. They're fine. Um, also, I want to do a call-up episode with Bruce Arena at one of his things. Remember when we had him on last year? He said, I'm he going to a wedding us. this year. He invited yeah, he us. He did invite us up to his office. So, hanging with Bruce. Uh, New York City FC, do we ever see Ronnie Dyla strip again? I don't know. <laughs> because I think it's going to be really hard to repeat. You know, James Sands alluded a lot to that team chemistry and personality was a very tough balance for NYCFC to strike for many, many years. Now, Sands 
He's loaned out to Rangers. Tati likely going elsewhere. Is it Maxi's last year? So oh. my big question is, do we see Ronnie Dyla ever strip again hey. in Major League Soccer? Fingers crossed. <laughs> New York Red Bulls, keep sending the wine. We promise the next time we're drinking your wine, we will also have your your player on. But I'm ready for the Red Bulls to get back to those winning ways. Chicago Fire, after this episode and after you, Susanna Collins, I am pumped up for this team. Like you said, Good. New Crest, Soldier Field, better roster, brand new head coach in oh, Ezra Hendrickson. Um, it's going to be really, really exciting uh, to go to Chicago. Uh, Cincinnati FC, don't mess this up. All you got to do is win seven games. You won six your first year, four your second, and then six last year. The bar is low. You can, and they have everything. Incredible supporters, incredible new stadium that it's like, guys, if you can just string together some wins, I believe. you got the rest. I believe. You you got the rest. They got a kind of a brand new <laughs> regime. Um in in their front office and coaching staff so i think this is their year but hey you know i kind of want to be cincinnati this year just got to get seven wins and life is good uh atlanta united joseph martinez plus luis araujo plus a new dp spot now with barco on loan to river plate equals question marks under gonzalo pineda in his first full year um it has the equation to be an explosive atlanta united again will it be to be determined, but can't wait to get back with Atlanta United. Uh, Miami, can they get it together? And can Phil Neville come on the call up? Thank you. The end. Uh, Charlotte, can you beat Atlanta United's first year performance and make the playoffs? Yeah. I just kind of feel like that's their bar. Like they know they're not going to be Minnesota, no shade Mm -hmm. to Minnesota, but are they going to be Atlanta and like make that first playoff game? Maybe not win it, but I feel like that, I feel like that would be the bar if I was Charlotte. I want to make the playoffs and maybe win maybe win a game um, in the postseason. Orlando. Now, I didn't give a lot of attention to this over the last season, but um, the Wilf family is part of the ownership, is the ownership group, and that is the Minnesota Vikings ownership mm-hmm. group. I'm repping some purple today, not for Orlando, for the <laughs> Vikings who are not anywhere near the NFL postseason. Um, but with the Wilf ownership comes... Uh, new budgets. We've seen some exciting names. So I'm excited for Orlando, I think, join the next level ranks of of MLS um, this year and really be a force to be reckoned with more. Mm-hmm. And I say mm-hmm. that after they had uh, some success against Atlanta United okay. last year. Philadelphia Union, I think it's MLS Cup or nothing for them. It's like they've gotten everything right, like Supporter Shield, uh, CONCACAF Champions League. They hosted the Eastern Conference final. And had it not been for COVID, they likely would have been the team um, heading to Portland for a, or taking on Portland for an MLS Cup. So it's like, do they have the most pressure this year? If they don't go to MLS Cup, is it is it a disappointment? I don't know. And then DC United, um, does their head coach, Hernan Losada have a full, complete driver's license yet? And if he does, I would like to do an episode <laughs> in his car called the Carpool Call-Up. I like it. I'm surprised you, like you didn't include Jim Curtin wearing the call-up hoodie, though. In the oh, film. shoot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got way too into soccer really, on that. That I was mean, gross. That, MLS, MLS Cup, Cup. Cool. MLS Cup is cool, but like what's cooler than the call of putty? I'm just Jim kidding. appreciated you wearing it during a practice uh, <laughs> Zoom, but I would like to see it on the sidelines. Thank you very much. <gasps> oh, that was good. That was really good. You think? I, I'm here for all of your um What you gonna do in 2022? <gasps> what you gonna do in 2022? All right, all right, bring us to the West. The Western Conference, baby. Okay, we are going to start things off. What you're going to do in 2022, Austin, Austin. Well, here's what I'm looking forward to. The product on the field, matching the awesomeness of what yes, they please. have already done off the field. That stadium is ridiculous. The incredible fan base, the community outreach. I just want to see some good product on the field mm. in year two. Come on, Austin. I know you can do it. I know. And also, I'm excited to go there because that is on my list. I have not been to the Austin Stadium. It's on our call-up list. It is on our call-up list. So there we go. Um, Colorado. 
This is a good one. So Colorado, I am excited for them to sign a DP striker. Please sign a DP striker. You need somebody that can score goals. Did you know there was not one player in double digits in goals last year for them, which is a testament to kind of the, you know, cohesion of the team and how evenly balanced it was. But you need a DP. You need to spend some cash. Let's spend some cash. Let's get some and players in. I think they Colorado. admit that they they fell short of their own yes. postseason hope. Yes, a hundred percent. So let's spend some money. Let's open up those pocketbooks in Colorado. That's what I want to see. Um, Dallas. Okay, I'm very curious to see how Paul Ariola does with Dallas. I cannot wait to see this because they spent a lot of money to acquire this young man. And I am very excited to see um, if it all pans out because I think this could be really, really intriguing for them. Houston, Houston. Okay, this is another team, kind of like Chicago. New coach, new players, and they just signed Sebastian Ferreira, who is an incredible talent from Paraguay. Um, and this is a guy who is a proven goal scorer. And guess what? They need goal scorers. Much like Colorado, they need a guy who can put the ball in the back of the net. So I'm excited to see some goals in Houston. Uh, the LA Galaxy. This is an interesting one. I could have gone in a lot of directions mm. for this. Mm. A lot, but, but. What I want to see, I'm going to will this into existence. I want to see Chicharito healthy for an entire season because we saw he started out last year so strong. I mean, I was going to run away. He was going to take over. If he had stayed health, if he had stayed healthy, I think he would have won the golden boot last year. So I want to see a full season of healthy Chicharito because I feel like it's there. He wants it. He's hungry. Let's go. I Let's thought go. you were. I mean, I'm here for that, but I thought you were going to say you want to see Chicharito on the call up. Well, that's. Oh, that goes without saying. Listen, guys, we're trying. We are trying really hard to make that happen, and hopefully, we will be able to deliver that. Amen. To you all. Nice little Amen. teaser. There you go. Um, okay, LAFC. Oh, I am excited to just see what the identity of this team is because for since the, in 2018, it has it was Bob Indeed. Bradley's team, right? Like it was Bob Bradley's team and Carlos Vela. And it was, and now it's like, you know, there's, everyone's gone. Well, Carlos Vela is still there to be fair, but new coach, I mean, everything. So I'm just very curious to see um, if this is a team that has to kind of like recreate an identity and what it's going to be, because we know them as a very successful team, um, a team that is a consistent playoff contender and it sort of fell off last year. So let's see. Let's see what LAFC can bring to the table in 2022. Um, Okay, Minnesota. (gasps) I am so excited for them to host All-Star. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see Adrian Heath coaching an MLS All-Star team. And also, in the same way that Chicago was glorious in the summer, so is Minneapolis-St. Paul. And so it's going to be so much fun. And that stadium is just divine. And we're going to get to be there for an extended period of time. And I am so very much looking forward to that. Nashville. Nashville. Oh, guess who's getting a new stadium? That would be Nashville. And guess who is going to do our darndest to be there when it happens? The call-up. Thank you very much. So, yes, I cannot wait to see. The renderings of this place look incredible. All of the updates that they have posted on social media, this is going to be spectacular. So super excited for the new stadium in Nashville. (gasps) RSL, RSL, the playoff darlings of 2021. I am so very excited for them to have a full season of Pablo as the head coach. I knew you were going to pick that. I love Pablo Mastroini so much, and I cannot emphasize enough what an exceptional job he did with that group. During a season where they were put through the ringer, there was so much adversity that, that there was a lot of going. brokenness and a Salt lot Lake. of brokenness, a lot of brokenness. Like, I mean, just management, head coach leaving all of it. It was just, you know, a little bit of a mess. Um, but a full season of Pablo who earned, who earned that job as the full-time head coach. Um, I'm so excited to see what they are able to do and maybe pull up another upset or two. Let's see. Portland. Portland Timbers. Oh, this is kind of like a sad one because I, as we all know, Diego Valeri um, has left Major League Soccer, which breaks my it's okay, Susanna. heart. I know, but he's going back to Argentina, which I'm very happy for because that's he's going back to his childhood team. He's bringing his family. I mean, there's there's a lot to celebrate. And so what I want to see in Portland, I want to see a Diego Valeri tribute match. 
I want them to put up a statue. I want them to bring oh, the back. statue. Yes, and like and then play um um you know sort of one of these like exhibition matches. They are them. against. They will against Lanus. There we go. That's yeah, what I want. Merritt, to see. Merritt Paulson has has promised oh. that um, when all is said and done, there Thank will be you, a Merritt. Lanus Portland Thank Timbers you. tribute match. Quick, quick thing Thank though, you. Merritt, because we know that maybe he's the only owner in MLS that listens. Merritt, listen. When's the statue coming up? And can Suzanne I and I come for the unveil? Yes, yes, and this better be a good statue, right? You know, oh. we've seen we've seen some travesties in the statue department in the soccer world, so let's not go there. Let's <laughs> let's do Diego Valeria solid, shall we? We trust MP. We trust Thank MP. Thank you. Um, okay, San Jose. Um, I am excited. I want Matias Almeida to grow his hair back. <laughs> Yes, please. If I had one wish for San Jose, it's that Matias Almeida gets the flow back because it's well, glorious. I haven't seen him. And I, haven't just, seen I know him. I don't know what stage it's at yet, so maybe he's in the process of growing it back. Um, I also really want to see Jeremy Abobasi have a good season because I love him so much, and I think he's so talented, and so I want him to stay healthy and put together a good season. So Matias Almeida here, Jeremy Abobasi, Seattle. Uh, same kind of vein as Chicharito. I want to see a healthy Jordan Morris because boy, has he been unlucky in that department. And he is such a good person and such an, a special player, not only for the Seattle Sounders, but for the U S men's national team as well. And I just hope that he can stay healthy because when he is, he is truly spectacular. He's and such a good person. He really is. And he just so I just want this for him. I want this for him. I want this for the U S for Seattle, for everyone. Healthy Jordan Morris, um, sporting Kansas city. I would like to see Daniel Shalloway and Johnny Russell as call up correspondents this year, because I really think that they enjoyed their time on the podcast and they are a dynamic duo. The two of them together is gold. And I think that, you know, if maybe once a month, we just get them to do some little segment, but I think they would be down you know, they are kind of like Jill and Susanna protégés. I I like to think so. I you know, like we can we we can help them, you know. Can I add one to world. your to your Kansas City? Sure. I'd like to see Peter Vermees appear back on our show in a sleeveless tee, like he like Dr- we and see. drinking wine. Yeah. Remember when we <laughs> we spotted him in his is his cut off tee? Oh, that um, was I think preseason like pre- last year. Last year. I'd gun appreciate show. I appreciate that outfit uh, for PV PV gun show and red wine. <laughs> okay, we'll put that to the, we'll put that on the list. And then finally, finally, Vancouver. I am dying to see more of Vanny Sartini's <laughs> cat Frida because okay. I don't know if you all know this, but Vanny Sartini, the head coach, who is <laughs> magnificent and is a character in his own right. He has a Bengal cat named Frida who has her own Instagram account and it's sensational. And I love cat content and I love Van Vanny Sartini for creating an account for his cat. So Hashtag that's it. Yeah. There free, we go. Fr- free Frida. <laughs> she's free she's, Frida. She's delightful, as is Vanny Sartini. So there we free go. Free her. Cheers. That's the West. Oh, I'm pumped for 2022. What's on tap, Jillian Zarkovitz? Well, guess what, guys? Um, It is February, and that means it is Black History Month. And Major League Soccer announced today that there's a series of programs and initiatives throughout the entire month that are going to emphasize and amplify awareness, education, and celebration of Black culture. We love it. In collaboration with MLS Works Soccer for All Speaker Series, the call-up and extra time are going to shine a light on some of the key issues and highlight stories within the Black community. We have some incredible guests lined up this month, Jill. I am so so looking forward to that. Such a good way uh, to kind of restart uh, the call-up for 2022. Uh, MLS clubs are also getting involved in respective local communities. For more information on how you can get involved, uh, you head over to MLS Soccer dot com throughout black history month that is throughout february also get your sweatpants on people <laughs> do you have, wait i haven't i haven't put you on the spot in a minute do you have sweatpants on right now um yeah they're yoga pants they're like kind i was of gonna like, say if you are wearing no pants. god are you kidding anyway i i, I kind of feel like i have my goalkeeper sweatpants yeah my these are just goalkeeper uh, sorry i know touchy subject but get your sweatpants on people the world cup qualifiers continue tomorrow night Ooh. as the u.s men's 
national team, the pressure's on, takes on Honduras at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. That game's going to be on FS1, Univision, and 2DNA. And then Canada. (sighs) Good old Canada, who is crushing it. Taking on El Salvador immediately after at 9 o'clock. fun are they? Eastern time. Can't wait. OMG. OMG. Honestly, good on you, Canada. 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 My home and ages. I love it. Sorry. Sorry. Every, I sing it. Like, I think it's just a beautiful it is, song. So anytime it is beautiful. you play it, I'm like singing it top of my lungs. Full blast. <sighs> okay. Um. Also, guys, we are just over three weeks away from the start of the regular season. Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. But CCL, CCL starts in just two weeks. The 2021 Supporter Shield winners, the Revs, take on Cavalli in leg one of the round of 16 at 6 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, February 15th. That's followed by the reigning MLS Cup champs taking on Santos NYCFC against Santos, 8 p.m. Eastern. CCL is back. We are just, there is no off season once again. Here for that. And that night we'll finish off as Montreal takes on Santos Laguna at 10 o'clock Eastern time for the full CCL round of 16 and the MLS schedule. Just head over to MLSsoccer.com. And on that note, that does it for episode number one. Guys, we have so many cool trips, guests, um, fun segment ideas in store for you this year. So thank you so much for listening. You are everything to us. We're really nothing without our listeners. And uh, no. cheers and to that. And on that note, hey, guys, you know, if you want to leave us a nice little review on uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you subscribe, that would be much appreciated because, you know, let's let's start off 2022 um, on a super high note. That'd be great. Leave a, right? Here, leave us a review. Uh, and tweet at us that you did, and we will uh, we'll show you some you. love. We'll, we'll show sh- you some love. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers to you. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up. And if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call-Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?